Good morning. Here we are. It's nice to be inside with you and with rocks. It's just windy out there and a bit cold and I felt like being inside. So here we are. Um, and today it's big, shiny, wonderful, delicious things. So we're going to just start with this beautiful Chinese quartz pyramid. And I know it's Chinese because behind me, oh, other side, see that point there? That point, it's the big brother, well it came from the same mine as this, the same place as this, and that big point, which I have to show you sometime, um, is from China. So, you know, a lot of quartz, at least once upon a time, used to come from Brazil, but this is from somewhere else, and um, I love it, it's just beautiful. Um, I think it's got a rainbow in it somewhere, but I always struggle to find it, and I never managed to, oh there it is, I don't think I can show it to you on camera. It's it's in here. It's just a question of whether I can catch the light right, and I probably can't because of where it is. That white shiny bit there is where the rainbow is. There's a little bit of water caught in the quartz, but the light is from the wrong direction, so um, I can't show it to you. You're just going to have to imagine it. Morning, Carrie Ann. Afternoon, evening to you. Lovely to see you, sweetie. So here we are, um, and this one does have a nice little oh can i show you it's got inclusions little golden sort of colored inclusions in it i just really um i like this it's beautiful good morning beautiful beings it is so lovely to see you um here's some more quartz and this clearly is not white quartz this is smoky quartz smoky quartz is white quartz that's been exposed to radiation and radiation makes it go dark um, and I love this because its edges are like being dipped in ink, you know, um, and it's all very shiny and you can see all the little, you know, just the, the face of the crystal is not flat. It's all very interesting. And then you have this fractured, well, it's not fractured, is it? It's the way it's grown. Look at that. All that detail there. And then this bit is actually broken. That's where it's been broken apart from something or knocked away. I think that is a natural face, and then we have, if I turned up the other way, we have this. Just just beautiful. Look how flat that top is. So I'm really fond of this one. It's um it's just lovely. It's got all, you know, it's it's just got a great mix of everything. And um yeah, it's lovely to be able to show it off to you. So there it is. And last but not least, this does turn out to be one of my favourites. This rather unassuming looking rock is blue and purple fluorite. Um, and it comes from the Okaruso mine somewhere in South Africa. And it doesn't look very exciting until I pick up the phone because I have to do it this way. And you can see the light coming through it. And uh, then it's suddenly glorious. It's just beautiful. So the light's a bit weird. Still learning how to manage this camera because you know it's quite different from my other phone. But there is the blue fluorite, um, and it's just lovely. I love being able to share this with you. So it's quite an unusual thing to have a piece of blue fluorite this big. And this is one that came and had a sleepover with me from my friend Jenny Paolo's collection, and I liked it so much. I bought it, and um, I haven't bought a crystal for many years, because people give them to me, but um, I haven't actually said, I want that one, but I really did decide I wanted this one. So there it is, beautiful blue fluorite. Now, today, let me sort out, oh yeah, the camera's level, all right. So today I want to talk about the challenge we have with change, and why it's uncomfortable. And... The fact that it is uncomfortable to really truly change because you've got to go somewhere new and we don't like that. Just fundamentally, we've evolved to resist that which is unfamiliar. Um, and the fact that that is okay, that it feels uncomfortable and that we resist going somewhere new. We, we don't like, for example, saying I've been feeling depressed for the last 13 years and I want to practice a different feeling which is, you know, different words, but it's what I decided quite some time ago when I understood that this was actually possible. 
I decided to practice different feelings from what I was used to feeling. And it did not feel good to do. It didn't feel good to do. It felt hard. It felt stupid. It felt, are you kidding me? This is dumb. This will, I mean, I can't feel anything. Whatever. It didn't feel good at all. Um, and more recently, I've been doing all kinds of things that are completely uncharacteristic of Maddie for the last however many decades. And that doesn't feel good either. Except that those choices that I'm making, those feelings that I'm having, um, you know, the different choices that I'm making, the unknown that I'm walking into, is actually who I want to be. It really is. Morning, Julian. Morning, Lynn. Good morning, beautiful people. It's always lovely to have you share your time and energy with me. Um, so, you know, I can stay with what I'm used to and what I know, which is very familiar with me, and it's comfortable even as I don't like it. You've got to be really clear that we are completely comfortable being uncomfortable. And really, we only change... Most of us, we only change when the pain of being where we are becomes so great that we are willing to overcome the pain of going somewhere new. And that's a bit of a bugger because for some of us, we never get there. And we spend our lives mired and arguing and complaining and you know everything else about how awful it is. But we're not going anywhere new. Morning, Mike! Um, and that, that is a deep challenge that every single one of us faces. We are comfortable with what we know, even when it's crap. Um, so if you're going to change your life, if you've been habitually victimized or angry or sad or sick, oh, that's a tough one, or whatever it is for a long time, you have to understand that when you start to change who you're being and make different choices because you want to have a different life, it's going to feel uncomfortable and that is okay. That's a big deal. Because people somehow think that going from where they are to where they want to be is going to feel good. And it does once you've got there. But... To get where you want to go, you have to leave where you are. And that doesn't feel good. That feels, on some level of us, not necessarily consciously, usually not consciously, that feels scary. And so you have all the thoughts come up about, I'll start tomorrow, do it later, this is hard, my body hurts, suddenly, you know, suddenly you need to go to the toilet every five minutes. Whatever it is, your, your body and your brain rebel. And all of a sudden, you just feel like, you know, you want to run screaming in the other direction. You think, what the hell happened? If you're lucky, you think, what the hell happened? Many people just think, oh, well, this, this just feels really bad. No, I'm not going to do this. But that is because it feels unfamiliar. It feels scary and dangerous. We innately, automatically, evolutionarily, in order to survive, resist what we do not know. Better the devil you know than the one you don't. Truly, you know, I mean, if you think about the, 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 the ancestors, beyond the ancestors, the, you know, 250,000 a million years ago, however many, what, however many generations of generations of generations of all of the pre-homo sapiens, you know, beings that, that we come from and what they had to do to survive, what was known was safe, or at least you knew what you had to do to try to navigate it. You know, if you know there are pre there's a predator that lives in this place, you either walk around it or you go really carefully or you take a big, big stick, you know, and you get ready to defend yourself. What you know is what you know. Going somewhere else, there could be anything there. And, you know, if you are busting your ass just to survive, that is the information that is relevant to you. Anything else is bonus. The idea of relaxing and opening your heart and having a different experience and feeling joy and love is a secondary, not important. I need to survive. I need to feed my family. I need to defend that which is dear to me. That's it. That's survival. And so, you know, 
that the autonomic and the automatic and the subconscious and the unconscious parts of us are busy doing that because they're programmed to do that. And if you want to live a different life than being in that space of saying, I know how to manage this and, you know, there's lions here, but I know how to get around them. If you want to go to a place where there aren't lions, believe it or not, it's going to feel scary and it's going to feel hard. And you're going to have all the thoughts that I have been so familiar with. Oh, no, I can't do this. No, this can't be done. And it, it isn't so much. I mean, actually, for me, it was about not knowing how to do it. Um... But when you know how to do it, and you start doing it, you then just find out how much resistance there is in you to going somewhere new. So you got to understand that's normal. you really got to understand that's normal. And more than understanding that that's normal and par for the course and what you can expect, you actually need to find a way to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You have to find a way to self-regulate, to manage yourself, to move through that instead of letting the discomfort of what you don't know and can't predict throw you back into what's familiar. Um, and how do I tell the story without getting into details? See, I've been doing a lot of this, a ton of this in the last week because I became more and more and more and more, I mean, hugely aware of very repetitive thought processes that were going around and they were hypervigilant, constantly monitoring and evaluating and watching and looking for trouble and trying to work it out and trying to plan and trying to... And it was just... It was it was taking over my brain. In fact, it had taken over my brain. It was just there. It was taking an enormous amount of energy. It was stressful. And I knew that this is just, I cannot stay here because this is bad for my body. Never mind that I don't like this feeling. But here's the rub. It was extremely familiar and it was a safe kind of fear because I'm, I'm monitoring, you know, there's a lion there, there's an alligator there, there's a tiger there and, and I'm keeping my eyes open for all of them and I know as long as I keep doing that, I'm going to be safe. That is the fundamental thinking that's going on. While I'm keeping all of those plates spinning and hypervigilant and watching for it, you know, it's, it's, it's not comfortable and it's not good for us, but we feel safe because we've got everything sort of under control even though we don't really. I hope this makes sense. So when I became more and more aware of how intrusive and domineering these thoughts were and the feelings that went with them, which were not nice, I just thought this has to stop. It really has to stop. And I, I actually kicked my meditation practice into very high gear last week and I spent a lot of time. I mean, I was meditating two or three times a day, every day. The only day I didn't meditate more than once was yesterday, and it was simply because there was no time. Um, there wasn't. But, I, you know, I still spent 96 minutes in the morning, which is like bare minimum for me. It's just what I've needed to do. Um, because I made this deep decision, and that's important, that I, I wasn't going to allow myself to stay in that state because it was, it was just very destructive. And at the same time, I also knew that, my ability to change my state with my eyes open was limited because this was so deep. And it was, you know, full on, scary shit. Um, and so, you know, I've spent the week and I will continue to do this. It's got, a, it's got a bit easier because I have overcome myself so much. But I've still got more to do. But being very aware of these processes, so, you know, I'm spending more time in the field, which means that my body gets more visceral experience of how I want to feel. Because when I get really coherent, I can make that connection. I can feel the energy move. I feel the divine. I know that I'm I'm seen. I'm not forgotten. I'm loved. I'm supported. I, I get all the conversations and the information. I understand all this and it's great. Then I open my eyes and I, I'm walking through my life and very quickly I forget. But the more often I'm reminded of meditation, the easier it is to bring it back to me to remember and to catch the thought, you know, every 20 seconds, oh God, again. And so I've been doing this an enormous amount and recognizing how unsafe it felt to stop feeling that fear. Because the fear is trying to protect me, right? 
It's trying to make sure that I keep everything organized and in place and, you know, where it needs to be. But I don't want to be feeling that. So, I, you know, the whole thing of, no, well, what do I want to feel? And, of course, that would come to me in my meditations. And I would practice it for the next however long until the next one. And then I'd get an upgrade on that and I'd practice that. Um, but the absolute realization that I didn't feel safe to not feel afraid it's very, very common. We just get so accustomed to feeling the way we feel and it doesn't feel safe to feel any different even when we want to. So you have to be understanding that you're going to have to overcome that and you may have to overcome that a lot. Saturday, it's like every 20 seconds. For the, there were periods of the day when it was just so intense. And I understand that when that's happening, that's when the change is happening. And, and to just hang in there and keep doing it. I spent a lot of time in the unified field on Saturday. God, it was good. Um, but just, this is the process of change. And so I actually have gotten better at being in the discomfort of being somewhere new. Of saying, no, I'm not going to think that fearful thought again. I'm not going to have that experience in my body again. I'm going to do this and this and this. Because this is what I practiced this morning and I can still remember it, thank God. So I'm going to practice that again and again and again. And it was hard work. It really was. I had to massively overcome myself. But I had some profound understandings come to me. Not just the meditation either, with my eyes open. The information, yeah. I will remember this moment. Driving up Newlands Road on the way back from my um, walking meditation in the morning. And this understanding just struck me. You know, because I was having conversation with the divine about stuff. And, oh, you know, tears, it was, it was big, it was massive, and I was living that through the day, and it was, it was demanding, and then, you know, I did a wonderful long meditation in the evening after dinner, because I really needed to, because I had been struggling and, and refusing to give in these circling intrusive thoughts all day long, because I had this new understanding, and I was acting on it, but my, you know, those neural nets were very strong and they're saying, no, 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 you need to be vigilant, you need to watch this, you need to think about that, you need to pay attention to that, because that's the only way you're going to be safe. And I was saying no. Every 20 seconds or so sometimes. It was hard work. It was really, really worth doing. Because I did overcome myself that day. Um, and again, you know, more just significant realizations and changes and oh I need to do that differently now so the only way you're going to get more familiar with who you want to be is to stay in the discomfort of what's new and it really is like breaking in a new pair of shoes you know new pairs of shoes is great I like these shoes they protect my feet that's great and then you start walking you think oh gee that doesn't but so well it's hard I'm getting blisters and then you know some people will just keep going and they'll blister their feet to buggery well I would rather just go gently or put a plaster over the spot until things wear in you know so for me it is as much as I applied enormous will to my change process on on my Saturday it was massive at the same time I was still having respect and kindness for myself because I understood how difficult it was what I was doing. So there is this balance of enormous determination and applying my will and my energy to realize that I'm pruning apart very hardwired circuits in my brain. And that's why this is so difficult. And that's why it feels so bad. And to not let that dissuade me, to not let that put me off and say, oh, well, I'll just go, you know, whatever. It's like, no, I know who I want to be. But at the same time, I understand this is difficult. So I've got to be kind to myself and walk this balancing line where I don't, you know, end up with bloody blisters that get infected and it's twice as hard as it needs to be to stick with the analogy of breaking in new shoes. And as my mental muscle gets tougher, as those tender parts of me 
harden up, if you like, or get stronger, it's a better way to put it, well, then I get more accustomed to those new shoes. They soften, they get, you know, and, and we kind of get to know each other. I get to know this new self that I'm being, and it becomes easier to do that and be that. I mean, it is like learning to ride a bike. Start off with you stump, you know, you fall off, you bang your. I remember I, you bang your feet on the pedals and everything's difficult. And you know, you want trainer wheels and you can barely sort of wobble along a little bit. And you push along with one foot and try to get your balance on the seat, and it's all difficult. And after a while, you get in your groove and it gets easier. And that's the process of change. You really are creating a new neural net in your brain about being this different person. And, you know, the process inside your brain, when you are saying, I don't want to think that thought anymore, I don't want to be that person anymore, and I want to think this thought and be that person instead, is you've got to fire that circuit enough times that the neurons start to make that new connection. Long story short, there's more neurology I could tell you about it. But what happens is, that there is a this like miracle grow, as Joe Dispenza would say, that makes neurons stick together and it helps them hook together and make connections. It's called neural growth factor. And it makes them much more active and alive and you know, so it's really good stuff. But there's a limited amount in the brain. So when you start making a new connection over here, the, the, that connection, if it keeps going, it's going to steal the neural growth factor from the connection that's not being used anymore because that's going to prune apart. So if you keep doing this one like I was on Saturday, banging away at my, oh, ugh, sooner or later this connection over here is going to prune apart. The neural growth factor will go from here to here and seal the new connection so that it gets easier to think the thought, I can trust myself in this. I do know how to do this. I am empowered. I can do this. And all those thoughts about, no, you need to die. They literally cease to exist inside your head. Because you pruned those circuits apart and you used the neural growth factor from here to seal these new thoughts into place. Literally, now there's a new structure in your brain to support that way of being, being that new person. That is the process of change neurologically. And of course, there's the chemistry that flows from it, that goes with it. Haven't talked about that today. That's a whole nother reason why it's so difficult. But I wanted I want to talk about this. It's challenging and there's a reason why. And you have to be okay with the fact that it's challenging and you have to know who you're going to be and be determined and committed to that at the same time as you love yourself enough to see yourself through the process with some degree of respect and kindness. So that's what I want to talk about today. Thank you so much for joining with me. It's lovely to have you here. Big love. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.